faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's 1 John 1 in verse 9. Satan knows that if we confess our sins, Christ will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But sin is identified in the Bible as transgression of God's law. In fact, Paul says repeatedly that he would not have known sin if it wasn't for the law, Romans 7, 7. That sin gives us an understanding of what or excuse me, the law gives us an understanding of what sin is, Romans 3, verses, verse 19. And so what Satan does is he subtly attacks the law of God, mm -hmm. maybe changing just one of the commandments, knowing that if we just break one, we've broken them all because the law is a whole. And if you talk to Christians today, they will affirm that we shouldn't covet, that we shouldn't steal, that we should honor our parents, that we shouldn't worship idols or take God's name in vain. Mm -hmm. But the one commandment that it seems the world has forgotten, right. the one that God said, remember, is in question. And in this way, Satan is seeking to ensnare us and break the new covenant promise that God has for us. This is, this is such an important point because if we look at the law of God as a whole, it becomes quite evident that as you read through all of the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath commandment is the one upon which our relationship with God is established. It's the one in which God has established a time of special worship, a time of communion with Himself. It is the commandment that reminds us of God's creative and redemptive power. You could simply put it this way, James, that the Sabbath commandment, when properly understood and observed, makes obedience to all of the other commandments possible because Absolutely. the power of God, the creative and redemptive power of God is in the fourth commandment. What we are talking about here is so significant, Ty. We want to just say to our listeners, don't go away because we're going to be right back mm -hmm. to finish this important subject. It was over 12 years ago, I was traveling the countryside of Norway when I was given tapes of Thai preaching. Well, they proved to be such a blessing. And I'm so glad that you can have the blessing right in your own home. Lift Him Up is an ongoing television series designed to make God's Word clear and exalt Christ as the central theme of the Bible. James and Ty are eager to share with you as much as possible. That is why they prepared a series of study guides just for you. They want you to have these study guides absolutely free. All you have to do is call 1-877-585-1111 or write to Light Bears Ministry, Malo, Washington, 99150. Or email your request to lbm at televar, T-E-L-E-V-A-R dot com. Ask for the Revelation 14 study guides. We're looking at a crucial part of Bible prophecy, friends, the mark of the beast and the seal of God. And in this particular study, we're concerned with what it means for the seal of God to be in the forehead and the mark of the beast to be in the forehead or in the hand. We're finding here in Revelation chapters 13 and 14 that we're dealing with a universal issue, James, that's going to impact the entire world. But for some people, it may be difficult to understand how it is that there could be any kind of legislation for one particular kind of religion when the world is filled with so many different kinds of points of view concerning God. We have Islam, for example, which number in the hundreds of millions, and we have Buddhism, we have Shintoism, we have Hinduism. How is it that the whole world could be involved in this crisis and find themselves yielding to this power? Well, the Bible makes it very clear, Ty, in prophecy. In fact, Jesus even spoke to this issue. In Revelation, we're told it's going to be economic pressure. In Matthew 24, Jesus says that there's going to be all kinds of calamities and distress in the world. There's going to be wars mm -hmm. and rumors of wars, and we have wars all over the world today. We have wars in Asia and in Africa and in Europe and in different parts of the Middle East that are telling us that the signs are being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. We have pestilence, Jesus said, that in today's uh, atmosphere is actually the number one killer in the world and the number three killer in the United States of America. Pestilence is something that Jesus said would be increasing in the mm -hmm. last days. He said in Matthew 24 that there would be earthquakes, uh, natural disasters in different places. Mm -hmm. In the last year, 1998, we had more natural disasters in the world than in the previous decade. And in the previous decade, there were more natural disasters in the world than in the previous century. Mm 
uh, news reports, current news reports, are telling us that our weather is going to get worse, not better. Mm -hmm. All of these are signs leading up to something in Matthew 24 and verse 9 that is very ominous and very much in harmony with Revelation 13. And this prophecy in Matthew 24 and verse 9 indicates that there will be a time when the nations will unite for a purpose. It says here in verse 9 of Matthew 24, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. There's a number of points here that are crucial. First of all, it says that God's people are going to be afflicted, and they're going to come under the threat of death. This is describing persecution that's going to happen in the last days, in the wake of natural disaster and political breakdown, wars, etc. And then it says that you're going to be hated of all nations. And that indicates that all nations are somehow going to be in union, in league. Somehow all nations are going to form a conspiracy against God's people to persecute them. And it's going to be the final point that Jesus makes here for his name's sake, which brings us right back to the book of Revelation and the seal of God issue. God's people receive the seal of God in their foreheads. Revelation 7 and verses 3 and 4. But a parallel passage is Revelation 14, 1, which says that they receive the name of God in their foreheads. The word name there, friends, literally means character. God's people are going to be persecuted because of the loyalty that they maintain to Christ and to God in the final issues. It's incredible, and we're going to see unfolding before us in the world these things transpiring right before our very eyes. They're happening already, Ty. Jesus said in verse 8 of Matthew 24, all these are the beginning of sorrows. All of these signs are like birth pangs. That's what the word sorrow means in the original Greek, birth pains that start slowly and mm -hmm. build and build and get stronger and stronger and more intense as time goes on. We see wars, we see pestilence, we see natural disasters getting stronger and stronger. And the word he uses here in verse 9 is then. Then infers what has gone before. Then, in the wake of these natural disasters and these wars and these pestilence and these famines getting stronger and stronger, in the wake of all of this universal, worldwide calamity, then all the nations are going to unite. We see mm -hmm. the pressure that's going to come upon the nations. In fact, Ty, it's really interesting to consider this because... We're talking about different religions. Well, look at what happened to Russia. You know, when I first started studying these prophecies, uh, Russia was a big, giant red octopus consuming a lot of the world with communism. And I wondered, how would Russia, how would the U USSR ever capitulate to a one-world government that was religious, that was enforcing worship of some kind mm -hmm. when they're communists? Well, that question has been answered. Almost 10 years ago, it was answered. And what we see here taking place is that Russia, because of economic pressure, succumbed and fell. And the first thing they did was turn to religion, turn to God, turn to some kind of supernatural savior. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is telling us that the rest of the world will succumb under these pressures and under economic pressure. Well, Revelation chapter 13 is very clear that economic pressure will be a major part of the last day scenario. It says there in verse 17, and no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So economic pressure, which Russia has experienced and they have capitulated and come into harmony with the West, this economic pressure, it seems from this prophecy is going to be brought to bear upon the whole world from the United States. Now, James, I know you were in Pakistan recently, and you saw firsthand in a Muslim country, a country where Islam is the controlling power in government, you saw firsthand this kind of economic pressure. You know, it's really interesting, Ty. You go to a Muslim country, and you don't expect them to be worshiping in any other way but in uh, relation to their religious teachings. This country, Pakistan, is in a 